There is a wide breadth of different types of missions you experience in the Fallout games. Some are kind of basic and pretty easy, some are super hard. Today, we are focusing on the latter. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the hardest Fallout quests we all hated. Starting off at number 10, it's Hole in the Wall from Fallout 4. It's the one with the diseased mole rats. Like this quest appears after you reach Vault 81, one of those rare vaults that actually still has people inside. What you have to do is enter a secret locked off section of the vault in order to discover a cure for this kid who's contracted a mysterious disease. While the secret section of the vault doesn't actually have any threatening enemies in it, just mole rats, these things have one thing about them that's really bad. They will give you a permanent disease if they bite you. Yeah, it only lowers your HP by 10, but nobody wants a debuff that never goes away. The only way to remove it is to use the cure you find on yourself rather than on the kid, which makes everyone in the vault hate you, by the way. If you want to play a good guy or just want to access the rewards you get for saving the kid, then taking the cure for yourself, it, it's obviously not really an option, you know? So the only thing you could do is just be really careful through this vault and avoid getting attacked at all costs. Oh, and if that was not annoying enough, for some reason the game has a bug where if your companions or even the protectrons you can hack get hit by a rat, for some reason you get the disease instead of them. So it just, it's that much more annoying. There's a few tricks you can pull off if you want to cure yourself and the kid, but these also seem to be bugs and exploits. And the game really just wants to force you to choose. This is a quest where it really isn't all that difficult normally, but if you want to get the best ending, it can be a huge headache and really tedious because you can end up saving and restarting a lot. At number 9 is Tumbling Joe's Obstacle Course from Fallout 76. Most quests in Fallout 76 just you can brute force them by getting really over leveled if you actually have to. This is not one of those, however. This is an unmarked quest and it contains one of the worst things you can find in a first person game. Uh, jumping puzzles. If you head in the woods north of the New River George Resort, which is east of Flatwoods, you can find this obstacle course. If you explore around, you can find a note on a corpse who just happens to be on the ground under the tree where the goal of the obstacle course is. Guess he didn't make it, sadly. If you manage to get up there, there's a chance you'll find an agility bobblehead to collect, but that's easier said than done. The course itself isn't incredibly long, but in another game, these jumps wouldn't be too difficult. Problem is, basically any creation engine game has awkward and difficult jumping, and Fallout 76 is no exception. Yet, jumping around is functional enough normally, but when it comes to precision platforming, it's almost uncontrollably bad. And it's even more so if you're trying to do it with a controller, which you wouldn't think so, being it's a platforming section. But yeah, you know. There's one little quest in Fallout 76 where you can't get your friends to help you or whip out some overpowered gun either. Yeah, you really just can't make it easier on yourself in any way. The only way to finish it is to somehow master the floaty, unresponsive, but sometimes too responsive jumping controls that exist in every Bethesda game. At number eight, Hard Luck Blues, AKA Vault 34 from Fallout New Vegas. This is one quest that starts off as basic as you can get, but it gets rough real quick. Main way to trigger it is by talking to someone at the NCR sharecropper farm who complains that their crops are being contaminated. Sounds simple, right? But it ends up being anything but as the quest eventually sends you to Vault 34. Now, Vault 34 is an absolute hellhole. On top of being filled with feral ghouls and being a confusing maze, the place is really totally irradiated. If you even want a chance of surviving the place, you have to pack a ton of rad recovery items like rad X and rad away, as well as some kind of radiation resistant armor. Like all this is bad enough, but on top of that, large portions of the vault are also flooded, which make it even more confusing and dangerous to navigate. Those places kind of just all around brutal, but there's a very good gun called the All-American if you take the time to open up the armory. Outside the gun, though, eh, it's kind of better to just try and get in and out as quickly as possible. And number seven is Old Olney from Fallout 3. There are a couple of quests associated with this location, like the Nuka-Cola Challenge, Shock Value, and Election Day. But the hardest part of any of those really isn't the quest itself, but the location. See, Old Olney is Death Trap. 
especially for the unprepared. It's like that for one simple reason, it is infested with death claws. Death claws are basically the ultimate enemy in the Fallout series, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, they're tough, they're incredibly fast, and their claws will tear you to shreds in an instant. These things are always rare, and unless you're sporting power armor and a lot of ammo, it's often not even worth bothering taking these things on. And they're bad enough in the open world, but trying to deal with them in an interior area is even worse. And guess where the Death Claws like to hang out in Olney? Mm, the sewers. In fact, it's possible to go into this area and not even see any Death Claws at first. Where they spawn seems to be slightly random. So usually you're just going to see them out in the open somewhere in this town, but sometimes they never appear above ground. If this is the case, you are going to be in for a nasty surprise when you finally do go down in the sewers, thinking that place is mostly empty, only to get jump scared by a few of these things there. Old Only is basically the Death Claw capital of Fallout 3, and it's a place where most players know to avoid at this point. If you're coming here, you're most likely just going to beeline to the prototype power armor, and that is it. And number six, destroy the source of the mutants from the original Fallout. One of the two final objectives in Fallout 1, this one is definitely the hardest and the longest of them. Fallout 1 can be a challenging game, but it's normally just kind of generally tough, rather than any specific quest standing out as particularly hard, except this one. The main goal of this quest is to infiltrate the Mariposa military base and blow it up, which will put a stop to the creation of super mutants in the wasteland. This place is big, there's a lot of high level skill checks, and it's got many of the most difficult combat encounters that the game has to offer, and unfortunately there's not really a lot to say about it. It's just the biggest and most difficult dungeon in the first Fallout game, and depending on what you do, it can also possibly be the final area as well. It's kind of just a slog, but one cool thing that is at least possible is that you can infiltrate the facility rather than just shoot your way in, and that can make it a whole lot easier. But if you don't know about that or don't have the skills for it, yeah, just a slog. At number five is Cappy in a Haystack from Fallout 4. This side quest from the Fallout 4 add-on, Nuka World, can be a very frustrating one. In it, you need to find these secret Cappy drawings hidden all around the park, and the only way to see them is by equipping a special pair of sunglasses. <clears throat> they live. The game is nice enough to give you quest marks that lead you to each one of the things, but the frustrating thing is, when you get close enough, the marker just disappears. So you gotta search in a fairly large area if you want the Cappy. And these are not things that are just sitting out in the open. They're often really well hidden. And because you have to equip the special sunglasses to see them, you might have to unequip any armor you're wearing, which can be really annoying because sometimes there are a lot of enemies around. Basically, the worst thing about it, having to hunt down all these Cappy pictures with like only the vaguest possible clue where they are. Even with a guide, these things can be tough to find. The whole thing is just frustrating. At number four is clearing the Wanamingo mine from Fallout 2. This is an early-ish game quest that will absolutely hit you like a ton of bricks if you are not prepared for it. Like Fallout 1, Fallout 2 is generally challenging just because it's a PC RPG that came out in 1998. Like these things were meant for a really hardcore audience and to say they could be a little obtuse at times is a massive understatement. So there's some pretty tough parts in the game, but not a lot that stands out as uniquely tough, except this one. In Redding, one of the first towns you can find in the game, the mayor tries to get you to buy the deed for his mine for a grand, saying that it'll be a great investment. What they neglect to tell you is that the mine is infested with Wanamingos, otherwise known as aliens, and these things hit hard. They're basically mini death claws, and they freaked out a lot of people playing this game back in the day. Uh, on top of doing a ton of close range damage, these things cause radiation poisoning as well, so they're just all around bad news, and for most players, they're way beyond what you can do when you first get there. Like I said, Redding's fairly early on in the game. Just one of these things can destroy a low level player and the mine is totally filled with them. Fallout 2 doesn't usually pull tricks like this. It generally has a pretty clear difficulty curve, but the Wanamingo mine appears, like I said, fairly early in the game, way earlier than most people would have a chance of properly dealing with it. So it came as a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people. Even knowing how tough it is going in, it's still a tough area that's gonna take a lot of time and resources to properly deal with. At number three is the entire Dead Money DLC from Fallout New Vegas. It's not a specific quest I want to get into here. 
It's just the entire add-on itself, because it really just wants to kill you. The premise alone sounds tough. You're captured by this crazy dude named Father Elijah who straps a bomb collar to your neck and forces you to uncover the treasure of the Sierra Madre Resort. But beyond that, the place is an absolute death trap. There's poison gas that'll quickly sap your HP if you stand in it too long. There's radios around that cause your bomb collar to go off if you stand near them too long. And there's invisible holograms patrolling around that will kill you in seconds if they spot you. Pretty much all this stuff is also exclusive to the add-on. One of them would be bad enough, but combine all three, and you're pretty much looking at any Fallout player's personal hell. Oh, and on top of that, all of your equipment gets confiscated at the start, so you're pretty much starting from square one. There is just no getting around this one. The DLC is absolutely brutal and never really lets up. And number two is Open Season from Fallout 4. A simple one from the Nuka World DLC. Instead of assisting the Nuka World Raiders, like you normally do in the quest line for this area, you just kill all of them. As starting the quest is quite easy. Like I said, it sounds very simple. You just start shooting raiders when you get there. A few other NPCs will offer you the quest, but basically it comes down to one objective. Clear all the raiders out of Nuka World. And for this quest, they literally mean kill them all. That means more than 80 raiders have to be dealt with in the central area of the park called Nuka Town, USA. It basically amounts to having to fight an entire town single-handedly. And these guys, they they can fight, let's just say. Even if you're overpowered to Hellenbeck, this quest will prove to be a challenge just because of how many raiders you have to fight at once. And keep in mind, Nuka Town, USA isn't the only area you have to clear of raiders. You also have to clear out the parlor, this top mountain, and the Brad Burton Amphitheater as well, along with a couple of other areas. It's kind of baffling that the good guy option for this DLC is just to wholesale slaughter the entire area of raiders, but you know, whatever, who cares? That's, that's what it is. And finally, at number one, the settlement defense stuff from Fallout 4. Everybody hates these things. They're not the absolute hardest, but they're so friggin' annoying. And they can interrupt what you're doing, possibly damaging your hard-built settlements. Basically, these things just suck. How they work is that after building a settlement with at least one person in it, you sometimes get a warning that it's under attack. And at this point, you can either warp in and defend it or just leave it alone. Depending on a surprisingly complicated algorithm, the game determines if the settlement attack was a success or failure. If the settlers successfully defend against the attack, nothing bad happens, but if they fail, the settlement will incur some temporary damage, as well as possible permanent damage like the loss of certain inventory items. Oh, and the settlement happiness will take a hit as well. The simple fact of the matter is you don't want your settlements to get damaged, so that means having to either stop what you're doing and run to a settlement's defense, or just build up enough defenses in a settlement that they won't get attacked, which, as you might expect, costs a lot in terms of resources. The whole settlement system in Fallout 4 is interesting. It can be a kind of a pain to work with, but it can also be very satisfying to build up an entire town for nothing in some hostile section of the map. The problem is having to defend that settlement constantly is a total drag and frankly, like, I just bypass it at this point. I, I don't care. What are some hard Fallout quests that you hated? Did we talk about one that you particularly hate or are you thinking of a different one? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.